it's great to be back with you this week, uh, the first week of Advent. Uh, you see my camera's a little, um, there, it's a little better, looked a little crooked. Um, anyways, we're in the first week of Advent, <clears throat> and uh, maybe we'll just do review the uh, from last Sunday, uh, the first Sunday of Advent. <laughs> Surely, Lord Jesus, as dawn follows night, our hearts long to greet you as roses the light. Salvation, draw near us, our vision engage. One candle is lit for the hope of the age. Here now in the first week of Advent, we hear the Lord will come and he will not delay. He will illumine what is hidden in darkness and reveal himself to all nations. And as now we, you know, are preparing for Christmas and it's really interesting this year, Christmas falls on a Monday. So we almost lose a week in December because uh, of it landing Christmas Eve will be on a Sunday evening and uh, Christmas on a Monday so it's gonna be a very busy weekend for us so I thought we'd just start off with uh, one of our Christmas hymns and uh, it's about uh, the coming of our divine Messiah I'll just put it on you're gonna hear uh, <laughs> Sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. 
You came to call sinners, Christ had mercy. And you're seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Prepare our hearts, we pray, O Lord, our God, by your divine power, so that the coming of Christ your Son, we may be found worthy of the banquet of eternal life and merit to receive heavenly nourishment from his hands who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. So in our readings uh, this week, uh, in the Old Testament readings, we, we often refer to uh, um, Isaiah. And uh, it's really amazing how the prophecies connect with uh, our New Testament readings. Because we hear in, uh, from Isaiah today, for all people of feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, a rich food filled with marrow and well-aged wines uh, stained clear. And uh, he talk, and then we hear about uh, how he talks on a mountain. And, and then today in our, our gospel reading uh, from Matthew, uh, we reflect on the multiplication of the bread and the fish and many people. Uh, came to him, men and women who were in the need of Christ, blind people, cripples, and sick people of every kind, together with those who accompanied him. We are all in need of Christ, of his tenderness, his forgiveness, his light, and his mercy. In him, the fullness of all that is human can be found. And today's gospels, gospel makes us aware of the need for men and women who will lead others to Christ. That's you and I. Those who bring Jesus to the sick so that he can cure them are the image of all those who know that the greatest act of charity towards their fellow people is to get them close to Christ, the source of our life. A life of faith demands holiness and apostolic. And I guess in a sense, uh, through my ministry of being a deacon, that's what I try to do when I I do these video clips uh, is to uh, just uh, reaffirm to everyone that unconditional love that God has for us. And yes, unfortunately, we are uh, always uh, struck with challenges in our life. And uh, um, even I often ask, where, where are you, Lord? How come you're not helping me? Um, but we hear from St. Paul today, <clears throat> uh, in his letter to the Philippians uh, that we need to have the same feelings as Christ um, you know we God, Christ has a heart you know the divine heart we often refer it to the divine mercy and uh, on the mountains my heart is moved with pity for the crowd that's what he said when he went up to the mountain he cannot leave them because they are hungry and tired and that's us eh? Christ uh, searches people out in in our necessi the necessity and manages to be there for us when we need him. How good he is to us and how important we people are for him. And I know, you know, we our hearts often uh, are swell with gratitude and admiration when we know he's present and Certainly, he's present now, the Holy Spirit. And two or more are gathered, uh, the Holy Spirit is present. But the God we know made us all powerful, and the God who loves us passionately, and whom we need in everything and for everything. Because without him, we can, can do nothing. Um, and that's, this is in the gospel reading, we hear how there was no food to feed all these people. They only had a few loaves of bread and a fish. And uh, Jesus said, bring that to me. And the seven loaves of bread and the few fish fed the entire crowd. If we realize how much Jesus counts on us and of the volume of all we do for him, as small as it is, we would try all harder to correspond to him with all our being. And I think that's our intentions through Advent, you know, is uh, 
you know, we're, we're preparing. We hear how Mary, the angel Gabriel, speaks to Mary and uh, informs her that uh, she is with child, the son of our father, God. And then, of course, uh, we also hear how Joseph, in a dream, was told, uh, you know, to wed Mary, uh, to be respectful, and that they would have a son. So, uh, as we prepare now, let us uh, just um, uh, go to another hymn and uh, try to find uh, uh, Emmanuel. Let's try this song. when I'm looking for a hymn I can't find it it's very frustrating uh, okay we'll go with this hymn here uh, go make disciples <laughs> Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and that's what we're pre pre preparing for during Advent. And of course, we know how he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Imagine he was descended into hell, and I think maybe we experience that sometimes on our earthly life. 
And then the third day he rose again from the dead. And that's when we're preparing for Easter. And he ascended into heaven. And now he is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. And so this is what we believe in. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. That's what we do at the beginning of our service. And now the resurrection of the body in life everlasting. Amen. And that's why, you know, we're preparing for communion spiritually. And uh, so as we always prepare, we want to be thankful for all the so many blessings that we do have. Certainly uh, the good weather. It's, uh, you know, we've had some snow, but it's not been extreme. And uh, we pray for all those people that could be traveling during this uh, holiday season. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And of course, we pray for each other and those that are there day after day to support us and help us. And I know I often don't say to my wife, thank you enough. And we pray for them. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for anybody that could be sick. I know there's a number of people in the hospital from our community. And uh, we continue to pray that uh, they uh, get better and, and can come home. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for peace in the world, especially in the uh, Gaza Strip and in the Ukraine. It's so important that we uh, keep all those people in our prayers, both uh, uh, um, uh, the Jews and the Palestinians, as well as the Russians and the Ukrainians. We pray uh, to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. As we now go and say our prayer. I'll just pull it up here. Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us in, and, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And this is, of course, when I wish everyone uh, 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 to have peace in their life uh, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always safe from all distress as we wait for the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And as always, I certainly wish uh, everyone uh, a sign of peace and uh, peace be with you. And now let us uh, go to our, our prayer of, uh, we'll do the Holy, 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 uh, or the Lamb of God, I'm sorry. through all these songs I see the ones I'm looking for. Uh, here we go.
I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And just imagine, uh, you know, in our gospel readings of uh, feeding the multitude on the mountains, how those people felt when uh, all of a sudden there was enough food. Maybe not in the uh, same manner that they expected to be, uh, but it was the food, the consecration that Jesus himself did with the fish and the bread. And um, so now we'll, if I can just find our prayer for unity, faith, hope, and charity. Here we go. Loving God, we pray that as a Christian faith community, we continue to be witnesses to Jesus Christ's virtues of faith, hope, and charity. May we be people of faith, always willing to follow the example of Jesus in all that we do. May we be people of hope, always trusting in your loving presence in our lives. May we be people of charity, always willing to give of ourselves to the better the lives of others. Together, may we be a community of faith, anchored in hope, with heart and charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let's go to a hymn. Uh, I am the bread of life.
So as we, uh, you know, are coming to an end, uh, behold, our Lord will come with power and will lighten the eyes of his servants. And that's what we're celebrating, of course, uh, this Advent season. And uh, I do have the Advent song that I'll play at the end here. We implore your mercy, Lord, that the divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. And uh, let me just find uh, the Advent hymn. Okay. Here we go. No, I tried that once before and I can't get it working. So we're going to go to, uh, as our ending hymn, Emmanuel. Uh, and everybody knows. Uh, First Advent, and uh, I'll go look for the hymn. Here we go. Oh, come, Emmanuel. <laughs> Advent season, may his face always shine upon you and be gracious to us. And may God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So goodbye, everyone, and we will see you next week. God bless.